So here we go with this quarter-final game between Nick Bell and Neil Britton. Neil Britton wins the lag and gets the first frame underway. And uh, as has been a common theme throughout the day, he breaks dry. So, Nick Bell on the yellows. And this should be a really good battle. 
Neil Britton would be a familiar player to uh, to a lot of people. He uh, plays a lot of money matches. Maybe not so many in uh, absolute recent years, in the last two or three years, but previous to that, very pro prolific money match player. Um, played Seb Webb a few months ago in a fantastic game. Probably goes down as one of the one of the best money matches of all time. 25-24. And a real classic battle. is a uh, match between two of the favourites. I would probably say second and third favourites for the event. Some people would argue. But, uh, I think that's the way the bookie would have priced it, or well, the bookie did price it, that uh, these were second and third favourites. Two very, very good players with a lot of experience between them. And both off the back of really good wins. Nick Bell, 10 2 against Cole Bedford. And Neil Britton, 10 2 against Nathan Overthrow. So both of these players will come into this game with a huge amount of confidence. Very nicely timed break from Nick. And as a result, one of the best breaks we've seen today. Wide open. Nominix yellows. Play the one in the middle and uh, screw back just below the top rail. He sort of put his hand up just to urge the ball to slow down. Any more pace and uh, this wouldn't have been on. He can just get through. Nice kiss. Just leaves him just enough angle to be able to punch the cue ball down table. That's another really bad miss there from Nick. 
two very unexpected and unnecessary errors and you saw by the look on his face that really was a very legable clearance that he should have been getting. Brings Neil to the table. A very natural player. He, uh, he's quite a quick player, but very expressive. Flows around the table. It's uh, really nice cue ball control. Probably wanted to punch that one through another another foot or so, but um, the side he put on the ball just killed the pace slightly. So having to reroute. He's trying to go around the back of that red for unwanted kiss, but I think he's still okay. He can play the one he's closest to to middle, or oh, he's got the long red in the center of the table. He's gonna have a couple of awkward last balls. He's taking the double now. Oh, I missed it. Just um, that was a very makeable double, but uh, I think it just maybe got a hint of a glance on the on the cue ball, which just strained it up slightly. So Nick back with another chance that you wouldn't have expected. And uh, he was hoping for a full ball contact on the yellow to leave himself along the one along the bottom round. But now this is really awkward. He's got the horribly precarious cut on the bottom rail, which is a high degree of difficulty. Well, he's got a horrible little cut back into the middle bag. Neither of those are particularly attractive. The one in the middle, he should be getting the black out. It's a good shot. Just flick the black, but uh, it's still awkward. Couldn't have played it any harder because he would have compromised the pot. So here we go. He's got a nice angle. He can play this with a lot of right hand side and uh, try and cannon that black, or he may elect just to try and land on it. And land on it. That's what he's done. You can see him urging the cue ball just to go up another few inches just to make this a bit easier, but you fancy him to get it. Very nice. That's a nice clearance from Nick. So mistakes from both players in that frame. Um, but it's on as even after two frames. Foster and Steve Bell, that game's still ongoing and it's still, unless the scores haven't been updated, it's 8-7 um, and that's been 8-7 for a long time so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. They're either in a bit of a fudge fest or uh, the uh, scores haven't updated.
my break. That's the second for nil. Another really, really presentable chance for Nick. snake he really didn't need to be near that red it went as it was didn't mean the cannon it Nice recovery. Still not plain sailing. He's left himself hampered on the rail. I may choose to, uh, in fact, probably will choose to, to leave the one at the top of the table as his last ball. Um, it affords good position onto the black. Black goes to left centre, so. As long as he finishes above that red, it should be absolutely fine. So it's all about leaving the angle. Oh, he's going to play the plant. Yeah, okay. Needs to finish just above the bulk line. Mm. Dead straight is no good. Either side, well, I think he's just got enough angle. Had he finished a bit higher, he could just stun down. I think he's just got enough angle. Dead straight would have been a disaster. You can force this down. Nice shot, well controlled. That's good stuff from Nick Bell. And that is a reverse dish, taking full advantage of Neil's dry break. Stats, two dry breaks from from Neil. Uh, no breaking dish as yet. In fact, we haven't seen a breaking dish today. Uh, a couple of unforced errors, a couple from Nick, and uh, one from Neil in that first frame. So just sharing a couple of mistakes, but so far been a pretty good standard. Loving the new uh, on-screen graphics as well. Great colours. Stand out. And Nick seeming to have some good success with this uh, with this break. One of the only players today, but I've got to say he is timing it really well.
noticeably Nick is using a, a brake cue. I don't know, but looking at the tip, I would assume that that's a... Yeah, it looks like a Jason Owen brake cue to me. Um, say it. Dare I say we're just about to have the first break dish of the day. Now bearing in mind We're in the uh, 34th frame that we've watched on this table. So that is quite an incredible stat. Indeed, that's our first break condition of the day after 34 frames, which is quite incredible. I don't think that really necessarily reflects um, the standard of pool because we've seen some pretty good pool today. I think it reflects the fact that um, the, uh, the table's not been breaking particularly well for these guys, and uh, that's reflected in the amount of dry breaks we've had. That's a, that's a really nice break condition there from Nick. And uh, he now takes a three frame to one lead. And it's over to Neil Britton, who has had no success on his break so far. Noticeably not using a break cue. Using his, uh, his normal cue, which he finds success with. Um, pots of red in the middle. Nice shot. Just uh, develops the one little problem that he had. Still needs to be careful. I think that's only going to plant in the middle. Um, so it should still be fine. It looks like he can plant that in the middle. The yellow's the other yellow is going to track up towards the the top corner bag. Personally, I would have preferred to be playing this from a little closer, but it uh, shouldn't pose any problems. As I say, it was just all about where that yellow went, and it was always going to track up towards the top left, and that looks pretty much perfect. He can uh, just drop the one in the center, leave himself an angle just to run off the top rail, 
over towards that left hand center bag for the one on the left rail just like so and uh, nothing to do with this just needs to drop it in the black is sat over the middle so wow that that's just slack sorry but that's uh, an unnecessary miss seem to get down and play it really quickly maybe could have just taken an extra second I mean don't get me wrong it wasn't a gimme it absolutely wasn't a gimme but uh, he definitely fancied him to get it and this will give Nick Bell a huge amount of confidence if he can take this clearance out. He was trying to get that white across. You saw him urge it further across the table. He would dearly love to take the red into centre as his next ball, but that's a, a tricky little cut. So uh, I think we'll see him reroute, go up table. Probably take the one. Well, he's got options. He could take the one just above the bulk line, or he could take the one just the left of the blue spot. He's going to want to address this ball below the middle bag ASAP. And I think that's what he's coming around to try and get onto now. It's still no good. In fact, not only is it no good, it's even worse. Because it now doesn't go in the middle. So this is now becoming a very tough clearance. to see whether that ball will double later in the frame. I think that's probably the only option he's got. Yeah, he's going to leave it to his last ball and just play it as a double. He could try and develop it if he wanted to. He could leave an angle on the one over the middle, but I don't think he will. I think there's too much that could go wrong with that shot. He looks like he's disappointed, but it's like he's got the right angle just to just stunned out. Maybe he did have something else in mind. Well, was he seeing that I'm not? It looks like he's got the perfect angle to drop down onto the double. But he's leaving the he's leaving the um, the cross table into the corner. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something here. It looks like it doubles into the middle pass of black. Maybe I'm being unfair, maybe you can't quite see the angle. That's no good. That's going to be a frame to nail. That's a big frame. To go full one ahead, or three two. Three frame difference, or a one frame difference. That really is a very, very big frame in the context of the game. As I say, maybe I'm being unfair on Nick there. Maybe the, the red didn't go past the uh, the black into centre. Paul thinks he should have moved it, but uh, I think the problem there is, is uh, all your eggs in one, in one basket. If you try and you try and move it and it goes safe, then you're in even more bother. At least you give yourself a give yourself a chance when you go for the double. I don't know. It's, uh, if he pulls off the double, then we're not even discussing it. 
Just one of those. Yeah, I kind of, uh, Billy's saying on the chat there, couldn't he have run through it? Didn't look like he had the angle to try and run through and, uh, and move it, but then if you if you catch it and just push it towards the yellow, then you've got no shot whatsoever. I think he was just trying to play the percentages and, and give himself a shot. But uh, he makes another ball off the break. And uh, not um, the easiest of layouts. I think we're going to see him take yellows. And uh, I think this first shot is going to be the yellow to middle and try and develop the other difficult yellow towards the left-hand side rail. In fact, he's going to go... It's going to make me look an absolute fool. He's going to go for reds. There we go. You can't call them right all the time. <laughs> Actually, I think... Looking at reds now, that's uh, definitely the right option. It's, uh, the shot I was thinking of was, was trusting the luck a little. And obviously he's still got the yellow on the side rail to contend with, so that's not so clever. He was looking for a full ball contact into that yellow and he's just glanced across the face of it. So again, these things are the difference. If he gets a full ball contact, then he's uh, got a very makeable clearance. And now, He's in uh, quite a spot of bother. Looking at cutting this in the middle. That was a tough shot. He played it well. He's been unfortunate, really, freezing up against this, this red. Had it have released, he'd have had it into the centre as it is he's um, got hampered queuing you expect him to make this so it's uh, just off straight he's just got to drop it in back in pretty good shape just looking at where he wants to be to take the one down the rail I would say just about where that big fingerprint is that the ball has just landed on. Exactly there. I think he can just screw straight back out past the yellow. I mean, somewhere just a, a couple of inches shy of where the cue ball is now. To leave himself straight on the road to the top corner would be That's exactly where he uh, he placed his his finger a moment ago. So he obviously feels comfortable playing from there. He can just run the cue ball up onto the yellow. So nothing to do with the cue ball. He can just yep yeah, nails it. Nice clearance. He's looking really good. And uh, that's another break dish. That's the second one we've seen today, and both of them from Nick Bell. Nick looking in really good form. If uh, Nick can carry on playing in this way, then Neil's going to have his work cut out today. But Neil has definitely got the firepower to get himself back into this game. Could be a very interesting game. Someone asking the game, uh, the score on the Steve Bell Foz Foster game. Steve Bell's won that 10 frames to 8. But uh, if you do want to know what the scores are, you want to keep up with them yourself or have a look back through the draw, then it's qscore.com. If you Google qscore, Forest of Dean Open, it'll take you straight to the page. Or if you can't be bothered, then uh, I'll just keep you updated with the scores as we go along. Shane Thompson currently four each against Ben Holly. 
And uh, if you would be so kind, if you could like our Facebook page, and also if you could share the stream, we would appreciate that. And also if you're watching on YouTube, then please do subscribe to the YouTube page. That means that you'll get a notification every time we go live, and you'll also keep up to date with uh, everything that Beard Productions are doing this year. Busy year for beer productions this year. We've got uh, lots of things coming up, and not least, we've got the uh, the players series from uh, Stoke on Trent. Lots of uh, big announcements coming up soon about that, about the uh, sponsors and prize pool, etc. So, some exciting times this year for uh, for pool in general, and uh, it's nice to see that lots of other events are springing up because of it really invigorated uh, the entire pool world so that can only be good for the game really good for the players and spectators alike so fantastic to see we're looking forward to a great year so as I say all we ask from you is it uh, you uh, like the page and uh Share it on Facebook, share it on your streams. That's a really well controlled shot. Heard Neil say the same in the background. That looks so easy to under hit, so easy to over hit. Played it to absolute perfection. This is really impressive from Nick Bell. And that is another reverse dish. So of the five frames he's won so far, that's two breaking dishes and two reverse dishes. Sorry, of the four frames he's uh, played so far. I said five, it's not actually, it's four. Five frames is one. Um, so anyway, the stats. Uh, two dry breaks from nil. Two breaking dish and two reverse dish, as mentioned. And uh, just a couple of unforced errors in there from uh, both players. I think in the last two frames, those were all in the first uh, three or four. High quality stuff. That, uh, people are going to struggle to to beat Neil uh, to beat Nick on this this kind of form. He looks uh, really good, and uh, one of the only players that I've seen in the event so far who've mastered the break on this table. Using that chasing and cue to great effect. Smashing the balls open. I think if he had the option, he'd love to take yellows here, but he can't. I don't think he can anyway. He's just looking to see if there's a gap between yellow and red. I don't think there is. Dearly love to be yellows. Reds aren't too bad, but got this one problem ball nearest this uh, this near cushion. It doesn't go to bottom left, so I just wonder if you go reds and then take the one the red to the right of the black 
into that bottom corner pocket off of the cushion, off the yellow, to clear the pocket. I think that's probably the order of the day. That's what, uh, he's going to go reds anyway, so we shall see what his plan is. see very soon I think that's his only option I think he has to take the red to the right of the black and he's looking at that now yeah exactly that shot cushion first off the back of the yellow clear the pocket tell you that uh, Scott Pope and Daniel Bishop are just getting underway and also on the table two just behind this one Steve Bell and Macaulay Gunner just getting underway as well. Meanwhile Ben Holly and Shane Thompson are four each and Nick Bell to concern himself now with uh, the angle that he leaves on this last red and how he's going to get onto that black or how he's going to manoeuvre the black. He's going to have to do something with it. I would suggest he's probably looking well, from this angle. He's got a great angle to come in to the black. Or he could just stun the ball and straighten it up and try and kiss into the yellow. I'm not sure I like that, though. If you kiss it half ball, the chances are it's just going to come back out and cover the black again. I think he has to attack the black from here. Yeah, that was that was going to be a problem. Do you know what? He's still going to get close here. One cushion. He's going to get close. Wouldn't be at all surprised to see him make this. He's confident. He's playing well. And this. A 6-2 lead. No, I didn't judge that very well. Shake of his head. He knows. Again, that was a, a really key frame. Neil just not settled on this table. He's uh, left that a much wider angle than he wanted. He was looking to be another four or five inches down the table so he could just drop this along the rail and leave himself the one in the middle but it suddenly makes this pot along the rail much more difficult and uh, there's no element of safety because if he misses it the black is right there so he looks to be deciding whether he wants to reroute. And he's just just not finding it at the moment. Just not
cuts seem to fall into a rhythm. You see, he's having a he's having a reroute. Oh, he's taking his medicine. He's going to play this one along the rail, but mm. confident. A lot of pressure on that shot. He played it really well. be fairly plain sailing. Just drop this one in the top and leave himself the plant. Nothing to do. Guaranteed to be on the next one. And the black in the middle to uh, decrease the deficit to two frames. I think harsh to say that that was a mistake from Nick. He was always trusting a little bit to luck when he played that cannon. But I uh, almost feel that he should have tried to address the situation slightly earlier in the frame. Big thank you to the, the sponsors for today. Cores. And the racker, as well as Tawam. Another miss there from Nil, but uh, very much in control of this frame at the moment. Nice landing on one of the difficult balls, but still got the problem of these other two. So he's looking now at where he wants to be to play a double. So he's got an angle to, to play a double and maybe kick the other red out, but kicking it out is not going to do him any favours because both his bottom pockets are, are covered. So I wonder if he can just try and maybe land below it to play it. I think 
think that's what he tried to do was land below it to play it long into that big pocket in the top corner. But, uh, that was always very, very high degree of difficulty trying to clear from there. And it's given Neil this uh, super chance now to get back within one frame. You feel for Nick a little bit. He's not really done a lot wrong in the last couple of frames. Just maybe... Uh, I say maybe not addressing the black earlier in that last frame. But uh, he's gone from a, a position of real ascendancy where he could have been 6 2 up, and now the deficit's just going to be one frame. But this is the measure of Neil. He's a very, very competent player. You can't take anything for granted against him, he's going to keep coming back at you. You just have to be able to weather these little storms. It's a touch thinner than ideal, but it'll be absolutely fine. It's just a half ball cut. And make it he does. And uh, this really has been a very enjoyable game to watch so far. This is Ben Holly five apiece. Macaulay Gunn has gone into a 2 0 lead against Steve Bell. Isn't it funny how the little mistakes just creep in? It's the first really bad break we've seen from Nick. <laughs> Didn't time it at all well and uh, sent the cue ball straight in off. land so just having to play a little containing shot
if they can manufacture a uh, an opener here and uh, well, he's not trying to it's just wow goodness me I'm sure he's just trying to nudge that one off the rail and leave the, the white up on the top cushion but he's misjudged that by about two feet you can see him scratch his head a bit puzzled and the fire just seems to have gone out in his game for a, for a moment it's almost like a bit of a rerun of the, the first match with Shane Thompson and Zach Shepard where Zach was uh, playing really well early doors Neil able to take a liberty there just trying to open things up slightly knowing that both sets of balls have got balls tied up it's almost one of those that uh, neither player is going to want to pot a ball really you don't want to move your chess pieces I think he's just going to well he might go for the pot but I'm expecting to double this one back down over the corner bag and he went for the pot could half see him trying to put in a claimer as I say unless you can go for an out you don't really want to be potting balls because you're just removing your chess pieces off the uh, off the playing area if you're going to pot balls you normally start doing so if you're uh, if you think you can get a clearance but I can't see there's a clearance on here Even trying to put a cover in over this bottom left is not not easy. And certainly, that's not what he's going to be going for. <laughs> sort of wry look there. So uh, he managed to move that red from covering that uh, that path to the yellow to uh, covering the path to the yellow. actually a, a very clever shot and uh, have that red come another few inches higher it would present a really good chance here and a little nudge on the yellow pushing it towards the red I think the yellow does. It's just looking to see if it's touching ball. He's looking to see whether it passes, or even if he could make a plant. If he can make a plant, then he can take this one to bottom corner. And just uh, or even just drop this in. Well. We'll know whether that goes into the middle because he does have an angle that he can uh, he can break it out if he needs to. But I think it goes in the middle. I think uh, he's just looking at dropping into the gap like so and just play this with uh, just a, a trace of right hand side just to open the angle. He's just looking now. Ideally, somewhere around about where that chalk mark is. You see the chalk mark just to the to the right of the. The red. Touch aside just to, to bring it wider. And that was where he was queuing, so. There you can see that's uh, just making sure there's no in off into the other bag. I mean, how tight is that? If that's touching, it won't go. Oh, what a great shot. Now then. Now then. Can he get through? Just going to turn it over. 
Lovely. Very nice. Really good clearance. Just need to put a trace of uh, left-hand side on that ball just to turn it over to make the potting angle. That really was a nice clearance. Six frames to four, so he stops the rock. That's a really classy clearance there from Nick Bell. Just trying to think whether that was was it a breaking dish? I'm just going to ask you guys at home. That last one by Nick was that a break dish? I know it's a nice clearance, but I'm just trying to remember if it was actually a break dish. I think it was. Sometimes you get so uh, so wrapped up in the frame that uh, you get to the end of it and you're trying to remember. saying it wasn't. Thank you. Yeah. Ashley asking if the semis and the final will be played. Yes. Play to a conclusion today. This one just below the black, and he's got the one hanging over the middle bag, which he can use. Well, I was going to say he can use to get it out. I don't think he needs to. I think he can cut this in the middle, and he'll be looking to get it out. Just, just got too much, just too much side on that. Need a much fuller contact. Just too much side through it. Just too wide. How about another go? Again, too much. Both those shots, just the side taking slightly too much. I think he's going to have to leave the double. to develop from here, he's playing up into the gap. And the problem he's got here is uh, holding the white ball for the, for the black, because the white's going to run around. I think he's going to have to run it around off three cushions, doesn't have any choice. But there's uh, those reds look big in the middle of the table. So he, uh, he should be aiming somewhere right about the blue spot with the white. Uh, he played to, uh, played to flick out table. I think if he'd have focused 100% on the, um, on the double, 
and just let the white come around naturally off the angles. I think uh, I don't think he'd have missed it. I think that's under hit by a couple of inches. I think he'd have been looking to play the lower one first, but they can still nail the top one. Run the one off the side cushion. Now he uh, he really does want to play this one on the side where there's a plant. It makes it so much easier. I think he's going to have to play it next. Trying to play that red down the rail into the pocket. It's so much more difficult than just playing it down as a plan. So Nick uh, just struggling to reach there. So he's only a short guy. I have to get out the uh, get out the furniture here. He's a rest. I think he's going to stretch. Nice. And a big margin of error. Just play to an area. So despite Neil mounting comebacks, Nick strides on. And this is very nice. Time for Nick to go try it. And uh, there was another one that just didn't seem to get into, didn't time particularly well. When he was timing it earlier on, he was uh, making a ball every time. So this becoming a must win frame for Neil. Can't afford to drop four behind. Has to start eating away this deficit right now.
everything there for Nick, apart from the uh, one obvious problem. And the obvious ball to try and address it with, the yellow is, is covering the path of the angle that he'd want to, uh, to attack that ball. As you can see from about there, to get across and knock it out. Well, I don't know, actually. Looking from that angle, he might be able to drop the one in the middle, still find the potting angle and leave himself yeah, that angle to get across there and uh, knock it out. It's funny how uh, the perspective changes when you look from a different camera angle. feeling that that wasn't really on and uh, equally he needed to develop those two balls at the top of the table because they were covering each other so we so played a little containing shot just to develop those reds just going to go Kush first I think he was playing Kush first for the plant but uh I don't know, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe just trying to push it into the open. Cush first to the plant. I don't think would have been a very good uh, option there, so. But you can see that uh, Nick's got something in mind here. Quick look at the other scores. Dan Bishop and Scott Pope, two frames each. Shane Thompson, Ben Holly, six frames each. And Macaulay Gunn is now 5 2 up against Steve Bell on the table just behind this one. There's another frame finished on that one you can hear Macaulay racking the balls in the background again Nick just trying to tie balls up by himself some time got some work to do to uh
a McMahon with uh, the liberty of having the yellow and black tied up on the side of the side rail, so he um, can go at these with a lot more freedom. And he's just looking now at uh, whether he can. I think he feels he can he can pot this, and uh, oh wow, that's not a good that's not a good shot. Yeah, just use his second shot to uh, to punch him below that that yellow, and uh, would have knocked everything out. But I'm not sure that's available to him now. I mean, the last thing he wants to do. Let's fire this red in below the yellow and, um, and free up the yellow and black. I don't think the plant is set back to do that, but if he could have carried the shot, <coughs> that's a good shot. I mean, as I say, he had the he had the freedom to be able to do that by virtue of the fact that the yellow and black are tied up on the side rail. So Neil now looking to. Uh, Go game. He's going to pop this into bottom left with uh, left hand side, try and open things up. But that was uh, high risk. He's missed the pot, but uh, he's got a second prize. Slightly running out of options here. Not sure what his plan is here. It's, um, even if he Gets up by the left side rail and uh, pots his yellow, uh, pots his red to bottom left and spins across and gets the other one out. He's still got the one tied up in the centre of the table. So it just um, seems to be potting balls without a plan. But uh, well, time will tell. Now, oh, can he fire that one to the top? Top left. Pretty low tariff on this clearance. So what he was trying to do there is uh, finish on the bottom rail to uh, double this, reverse double this red back over into the uh, the big pocket. And you saw him put his hand up, urging the cue ball to, to stop. But he's overhit it. And now he's not got a double on, so the only thing he's got, he can play this one to, uh, play this one thin to uh, left corner. Well, I mean, the double's not on. Is he looking? I'm not quite 
sure what he's looking at here. Surely not cushion first double. Well, if he'd have pulled that off, that would have been an absolutely incredible shot. It's good vision to even see it. But uh, you felt that that wasn't his only option. Thought he could have thought he could have thinned the um, the red and either um, just come low and uh, and played played the double or uh, try to develop it somehow. Anyway, let's frame away. Neil tidies them up and the lead is two frames at seven five. dry one and that's his third and I'm um, joined on commentary for the conclusion of this game by Luke Wiles how are you doing Luke very good very happy to be here it's um, been an intriguing game so far Nick's always been ahead but uh, a few mistakes from both players and you feel that Neil is still very much in this in this match. I mean, Nick, if Nick had taken his chances, it could be over. Yeah, I think at five two, uh, Nick really needs to step it up a bit. Um, I think Neil's taken quite a steady few frames, and they've been a bit. It's gone a bit tactical, if I'm honest. Yeah. This one could be an important one. I think Nick needs to take these out really. There's one tricky one on the rail, but a man of his caliber. Yep. Already is uh, run slightly out of position, I think. I don't think his target was this, um, this red top corner. Just kind of in betwixt and between. I have seen him in worse spots, though. Yeah. He's going to want to dearly leave the one just to the left of the black is his last ball to get onto the black. But, uh, looks looking, as if he might be playing into it. Yeah. It's looking increasingly unlikely. Another kiss there on that yellow that uh, wasn't wanted. Yeah, he's not in a fantastic position here. No, he may be forced to take this one to the left of the black and leave <laughs> the one down the rail as his last ball. I think he can just avoid the cannon on the black. And again, still not ideal. He did well, but he's just come a little bit too far. I have to play the plant. increasingly difficult. Yeah, so he's in a bit of a, a bit of a pickle here, I think. He's got the one down the rail, but it's a very awkward queuing. He's not looking like Ross's number one in this frame so far. 
Shout out to Shy Hardwick there. Sadly, he couldn't be with us today. Just left a bit of a gap there. So, Neil taking control of the frame. And suddenly, Nick with a a makeable clearance is uh, like against a wall now. Yeah, Neil's definitely in the driving seat now. That's a good shot, Neil. Uh, Nick recognising that Neil's still got these two yellows tied up on the uh, on the side rail, so. He had uh, that one shot to develop the red, but good vision and uh, executed it well. So everything in the open now. And Neil obviously also got the problem with the one to the right-hand side near the bulk uh, near the bulk line. So yeah, you have to get rid of that one nice and early. Yeah, he's played that one well. Well, that's not what uh, not what he was looking for. Just certainly didn't want the double. He was no. just playing the containing shot. He might look to turn this one all the way up into those two, potentially now. Yeah, he may be, he may be forced into mm. uh, into attacking here. Now that one's dropped in the middle. I think the thing that, that, that will stop him from attacking here is the, if that was his only problem, He's got that one nearest the bolt line as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think he still needs to. Well, it's a good shot, but still just adds another problem. You can now put one of them into middle, but the other one's gone on top of the red. It doesn't go anywhere, so. I don't, yeah, I don't fancy this to be the end of this visit. He might just drop this in and be on the other yellow to the, to the middle, same one again. But he's still got those two bomb balls. Deciding now to play that containing shot. So, it's, um, it's not a bad effort. He might, he might be forced into moving the red on the right side of the table, which could help him here. Yeah, I don't think it's a total, is it? So it's uh, no. you can't just drop the one. If it was a tilt, we could just go cushion first and, yeah. and drop the one up the rail, but... Thanks. That's a clever shot. Yeah. yeah that's a lovely shot. Puts a lot of pressure now. Uh, just throwing the gauntlet down, saying, "Well, if you make this clearance, you uh, you deserve the frame." Yeah, it's it was probably his best chance to ask a question. To be honest, he's gonna have to try and get on the other one, either to the middle or the, op or the opposite side. Well, that's not that's a bad shot. So just put some put some covering fire in. That's not a bad idea at all, actually. Yeah, look for the world that uh, he had to try and go game there, mm. try and manufacture something, but he spotted a defensive option. Puts the pressure back on Nick. And then Nick 
can't afford any mistakes because everything's in the open. I wonder if you might just try and, I was going to say, maybe uh, try, and uh, put, try and get them behind. And, uh, try and put some covering down the bottom, but I wonder if he could have just bounced this red on and off the cushion and left the left the white touch in the yellow. Mm. I wonder if there any options for Neil. Yeah, cause it doesn't go behind at the moment, does it? So. Could have done that. He planned on there. Mm, this is tricky. Maybe I will. I think he can go cushion first yeah. off, off the back of the red. Yeah. It's just looking now. Puts the red on the cushion as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's potentially a. Yeah, he's played out nice. Oh, unlucky. Yeah, but that's fine. Even if it didn't drop, he was always. going to be. Um, Gonna be covering the bag. Couldn't fail to cover the bag, so and uh difficult to find somewhere that Nick can land on that. He might try and get that bag again where the black neo is. He doesn't really have a lot else on. No. Just a reverse double back down. Yeah. Just try and put some kind of cover in. I think that's what he's looking at now, just to... And if the yellow goes to um, bottom left, it obviously goes to bottom right, but... I don't think, no. If it goes above the black, I don't think it does. Mm -hmm. So that might be um, might be a pretty decent option, just to try and put some cover in. Yeah. It looks like he's playing it now. The one at the drop? No. Oh dear. That. He might now have to play the shot we suggested before, playing the back double. Certainly not a, not a clearance on here. Yeah, doesn't have, doesn't have any choice. Who's made it? That's a fantastic shot. A brilliant thought. Nicholas showing Neil Britton why he's one of the best in Britain. That was fantastic. It's, it looks like he's potentially got the wrong angle to uh and the thing is he went wholeheartedly, didn't he? Yeah. I mean he could have played it pocket weight and tried to get the cover in, but mm. no such thoughts. He's been a bit unfortunate with the side he's left yeah, out. Just just a touch straight, isn't he? Mm. No, he's gonna have to um Yeah, if it, if he had a slight angle this would be so much easier. Mm. He's gonna have to force right through. At least make sure he gets below the yellow, otherwise he's not gonna be able to find the potting angle. Loading up the top spin. That's no good. No. It's just died. The top spin didn't take at all. No. Just absolutely died. If he's got enough of the cushion that we could play into total, he could play a nice little shot yeah. behind the black. Yep. Yep, dead weight in behind the black. I think that's probably a good shake. I'm not sure if he has no. He's not looking at it. No, he's looking at the pot. Mind you, if he connects it right, he might leave Neil with nothing anyway. I think that's what he's trying to yeah. do. Yeah, he's, he's just trying to play it. So if, if he hits it full ball and he doesn't make it, then yeah. Neil's going to be sat right in behind that yellow. But it's not worked out. And now Neil should be putting this back to within one frame. Just needs to be careful here because he needs to play this as a punch shot. He just needs to be wary where that yellow's going. Yeah. That's okay. I think he's fine. Yeah, that could have gone wrong. Played it really well. Like we're going to be 7 6 here. Yeah, really good game. Last well, Wayne, just a shout out to Tony and Dan for 
turn up this fantastic venue tonight. This hall usually has Zumba classes, so they've really transformed it today. <laughs> Looking fantastic. Yeah, it's a bit different to, to the Zumba. <laughs> yeah, just a tad. Even though I do like Zumba. <laughs> Scott Pope now 4-3 up against Dan Bishop. Shane Thompson's through against Ben Holly, 10-6. And Steve Bell, Macaulay Gunn is 5 each. And uh, Macaulay was, I think it was 5-2 up. So yeah. Steve Bell mounting a comeback. And it's been very unfortunate there with a the break. Lovely split. Very unlucky with the white. Yeah. Nick asking for a touching ball, which would make a considerable difference if he could just play away. Much easier just to uh, roll the ball to the, uh, the side rail and leave it safe. I'm not sure what they agreed, I think. Uh, Mm. Consensus was it was touching. I think they're still discussing it now, actually. Looks oh. like it wasn't. No, couldn't have been. And that was, well, I guess, touch clumsy. I think he was just trying to dab that ball away to the side rail. But yeah, a little bit careless there. Mm. Give him an opportunity, you know. Nice shot, and also a nice shot of Zach Shepard in the background. Always nice to see him. Yeah, Zach staying on to uh, to watch after his defeat against Shane Thompson earlier. And he was in a good position still. as well. He yeah, was four one up, I believe. Yeah, just exchanging a few words. You fancy Neil to get these now? It's, uh, yeah, should very quickly be a seven inch. I think the red flies by the yellow uh, on the top right as well. Yeah. Yeah, so it should be seven or oh oh wow. That is that could be massive. That could be a huge turning point in this game. That is in the heart of the pocket. Goodness me, look at that. The old Cadbury's parrot. Rolled straight around the back of the of the cup and popped out. Oh, it's things like that that uh, decide games because eight, six, or seven each now is a huge swing. Especially something like Nick. He's not got a lot of compassion in him. He will punish here. He's got one tricky, real tricky one, really, on the on the rail. But even that is he's made. Can walk it straight across yeah. onto it now, can't you? Yeah, which he has done, and he's put a red tie as well. He's he's not perfect, but. No, I think I think he's okay. I think it's fine. I think he can just uh, come across a bit. Yeah. Just come out to the. He's been good screw. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. This could have quite easily been seven seven. It looks now. Might be eight six to Nick. Just taking a second. Working out exactly how he wants to go about the clearance. It's 
It's okay. It wouldn't have played to be on the rail, but uh, yeah, just drop this one in. Nothing to do with it. You can just drop it in the middle. Good. No. He's there. His cue came up really quickly as well. Looks like he had a, some kind of kick or bad contact. But he's absolutely fine. Yeah. No, he hasn't sure really got into that way. either. No. But that's okay. You can. Uh, I don't think this was his first option. No. Uh, it's okay, you can leave a nice angle just to screw back across the face of the black. Yeah, into the same pocket, that's a lovely shot. Yeah. He's just waving his arm to get the, the cue ball off the rail, but he's absolutely fine. Just being a perfectionist. That's an unmissable black. Yeah, and that yeah. was a massive, massive... Yeah. Bit of bad luck for, uh, for Neil. Yeah, huge swing there. Yeah. After probably a careless safety by Nick, and he's lucky to get another chance, but he doesn't doesn't usually need two chances. Quick look at the stats. If we uh, not quite so telling in this game. The, uh, the try breaks there have been five, much more in the other matches that we've seen so far. It's. Uh, Five of 14, so uh, about 35%, whereas it's been way over 50. Um, break and dish two for Nick, two reverse dish dishes for Nick. Unforced errors, there's a few around, but it's, uh, as I say, fairly subjective. There's another one from uh, from Nick, uh, from uh, Neil, sorry. He smashed that break, but, uh, he's not timed it. and. The white's in off. Hopefully Nick can uh, wrap this up in the next few frames because I have a roast dinner at half past six. So <laughs> I'll be told off for if I don't get there in time. I can't miss this, unfortunately. <laughs> You're welcome to bring us back a, a plate. <laughs> well, Georgia, if you're listening, can you play <coughs> another one up, please? Can't believe I'm missing my Sunday roast. <laughs> Gotta say, it's I was only popping out for two hours. Yeah. It's been a great standard of pool today so far. A little bit awkward queuing here. Please play that ball. Yeah, the problem now is the one on the side rail to the left. Yeah. If you just look at that now, you know he's going to develop that one. Just needs to manufacture so he can get a full ball contact on the red, and he's guaranteed yep. to be on that ball. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Mm. I think he's okay. I think he's a, I think a tiny bit straight, but you can force it across. Just needs to go cushion, just knock the red out and leave the. Oh no, maybe. Maybe he's just looking to cut it down the rail. I mean, it will, it will cut down the rail. But you felt that if he just manufactures it so he goes cush first, he can't yeah. fail to be on the yellow. Unless he's thinking, well, he's if, he, if he doesn't it. pot it, at least he gets he's the bag where got, the black is. Got the cover, yeah. Great shot. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely okay. fine. If that drops, though, that is yeah, that's a game. Frame. Yeah, he was obviously hoping for it to drop, but yep. uh, he's got second prize. I thought it was there, I must admit. A little shake of his head, he knows. He didn't want to get Neil, let Neil back in, but... No. Exchanging words with uh, his 
Fellow court finalist, Steve Bell, we're on the next table. Well, well that's uh, a little rash. Yes, I do not think he'll be getting back to the table now. No. He'll put Nick on the hill now. Maybe that shot in the last frame might still be playing on his mind a bit. Under hit that by some margin, yeah, quite considerably. Given a, a glimmer of hope now. There is a there is a clear up here. It's it's not easy, but it's definitely doable. A little bit of no man's land there. That was mm. again a little bit careless because. His natural path now is pushing the red down towards that yellow, so yeah, he's going to have to. Yeah. Uh, good recovery. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't want to play the middle one because he was knocking it towards the covered by, but I think he's he's all right now. He's going to have to leave this one on the rail to the last, but uh, that makes it awkward because he needs to leave an angle and make sure he gets back across table for the black. Looking now at where he wants to be. Needs to leave a nice wide angle so he can just drop it in. Uh, he's left the perfect angle, but it's a it's a tricky little pot down the rail. He's gonna have some pace behind it. No, no, that's no good. No, no good. It wasn't easy, but. He was rushing a bit there. Yeah, again. Yeah. A couple of times in the match we've seen him just uh, up the pace where you think if he takes a, a couple of extra seconds yeah. over those really key shots. It's good stuff from Nick. Yeah. He puts him on the hill. It's uh, nine frames to six ahead. And uh, it's going to be his break. that Neil would have been looking for. He uh, needs table time. And uh, Nick comes up with a dry break to give him some table time, but he's not timed that break at all well. And as a result, there's a big cluster of balls in the middle. So we won't be seeing any clearances from here unless uh, he pulls out some really good developing shots early doors. It's probably the frames Nick 
will want now. Keep it nice and tight. Yeah. You just need to grind one more. But you'll be happy with a break like that. Yeah. He's, he appears to be the more patient one at the moment as well. He he's happy. He's happy to wait for it. What a great event uh, these lads have put on this weekend. Well, over two weekends, actually. So uh, they started last week. Played down to 16 with the finals today. And uh, Dan Troughton and the team done a really good job. Made up a fantastic arena. This is uh, very bespoke. It's not uh, a pool hall. It's a, um, more of a kind of social club. Dry Brook, Brook Sports Bar, as it's called, and uh, normally I don't think you'd see any pool tables in here. It's like a little, um, a uh, like a like a village fete they have in here or stuff, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's right. That yeah. is, it's a sort of village hall. You'll probably have a kind of uh, wedding reception and yeah. birthday parties and the like in here. So. Yeah, they put on a fantastic tournament. It's been great to see so many local boys get quite far into the tournament as well. Yeah, it's been really well supported. I think um, from the Forest lads, particularly Nathan Overthrow and uh, Files Forster, have done very well to get into the last 16 of this very tough field. Obviously, Nick and Andy as well. So some very good performances by local boys. It's great to see. It's a pretty good place to have it as well because it, it kind of attracts where well, you've got people like um, Scott Pope who's come up from, from Somerset it's not a million miles away and and uh, Shane Thompson from, from Bristol you've got Neil Britton from Midlands yep. so you've got a, a good uh, kind of kind of circle and plus all the local boys so it's uh, yeah I think as well as that he's been doing the uh, the Welsh uh, team which is we put the forest bit on the map as well. There's been a lot of the internationals in the tournament this time, which is which is great. As yeah, like you say, there's a lot of people come from quite far to come to this tournament for the first one, so it can only get better. Yeah. I think you've certainly got some work to do here. shot there from Nick, didn't really uh, achieve too much and uh, may have given Neil the opportunity to develop his his couple of bad balls here, he's looking at, uh, looking at a back double potentially yeah, or, or even a, a double off, a back double off the yellow yeah. which is what he's looking at and he's, he's made shot. it, brilliant yeah. and also uh, developed the black so that was always yeah, that was, well, fantastic clearance, really well worked out He's took them out fantastic. Yeah, very inventive. I did tippy tap them for another hour, probably, but fair play to him. <laughs> Nine seven. Well played. So pulls back within two. It's his break. So needs a needs a good one here. If you can get a break in clearance, and the uh, pressure firmly back on Nick Bell's shoulders. You can see one of the main sponsors, Talent. A lot of good products from Talent. There's a real buzz around their chalk, and also uh, they do a lot of tips and gloves and all sorts, and cores, of course, will be familiar. They're the uh, venue sponsor. Yeah, I know John Coleman likes their chalks, but uh, he'll probably lose a match and then probably uh, change it again, so <laughs> we'll have a new sponsor next one. That is not. It's a, it's a decent split. Yeah. It's been a bit unfortunate. Yeah. I 
think Nick and Zanis is potentially a big, big opportunity this month. Yeah. That's the only problem with uh, timing the break so well, going dry. This really is a guilt edge chance yeah. for Nick. He's got one tricky red, but he has got some balls to. Uh, well, I think to I think him. he can. The one that's just to the left of the black, he can just yeah. play that and land on the uh, one the difficult opposite. one to the opposite opposite yeah. corner. So yeah. I think this should be fairly elementary. He's going to play it now. Yeah. Yep, this is the one. He only has to just roll it through. He's got the one to the middle. After that. My goodness me. No, he's just taking this off the pot. Yeah. He was wow. certainly thinking about the next one, wasn't he? He was he was already it's already halfway through the next shot, I think. Forgetting to pot that one. He was perfect on it as well. Absolutely. Uh, I mean that's quite a shocking miss really is. That's buys him a bit of time, but mm. he can still potentially get on that red. But he didn't have a lot on there, to be honest. I think he can develop that one mm. difficult one now. I think he's got a, a free shot on the one at the middle to screw across um, bottom rail first and come up behind that red. Wood Osborne looks like he's having a great time. I think Nick has to try and attack from here. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, maybe the angle's just a bit too thin, but it, it looks for the world that it can screw across. Well, obviously, it completely could. He'll be having another go at it in a minute, though, for sure. Maybe he thinks well, he can get in behind it. I mean, there is there is also an option to DF. Yeah. It could DF the red on top onto the yellow and leave the red over the bag, and he'd have both corner bags. Covers nil with two shots, couldn't do very much. True. That is an option. The black tide as well, yeah. I don't uh, I don't dislike that option at all. No. He doesn't have to go for these. He's not he's not forced into it. The trouble is if he goes for them and he plays that cannon, he's trusting a lot to luck with that yellow being covered. I quite like the DS. Yeah. I don't as long as he hits his dead, dead mate, it, sh it should stay pretty much where the other was now. I think that's probably the shot I'd play. I don't really see anything else unless he goes all out and... Well, that's the other option is whether he, he he tries to he plays the plant and then leaves an angle to try and develop. But I don't like that. You're trusting so much to luck. I think this, at this stage of the match, I would ask the question. Neil's got... A ball on the top rail. He's got yep. balls tied up. I think I like the tie. Yeah. Both bottom bags covered. He's gone for something different. Just, oh. just continuing. Okay. Well, that doesn't. It doesn't really change. No. Anything. No. Is Nick's hand, I guess, but it's a bit unfortunate. He pulled the one out and he's. Can we play the? Uh, can we play the plant? Develop the red. I think he can. That's what he's looking at. Play it half ball. Can the red out. It might play a similar shot again though, and just. Maybe he's going for mm. it. That's. Yeah, it's not a bad shot. The trouble is, it's um, it's not. Uh, now, Neil Neil's balls are all yeah fairly good, and um, and Nick hasn't really advanced his position too much at all. Honestly, Nick doesn't take these. 
he can, he needs to get on the double there on the back. It's and now he's looking and playing in and, and, and kicking that, that yellow out. Which is why I think he should have played it three or four yeah. visits ago. Yeah. He hasn't played that bad, but it's it's still a, mm. it can go behind now. It's looking more like Neil's frame, isn't it? I think there's a clearance here for Neil. Yep. Maybe he played it too safe. I think he was trying to trying to uh, get the black out there. Yep. And uh, missed it by. It's a margin. It's quite a big pocket now. We have one the bottom right now with the red there. It is. And as long as he doesn't need to pot it as long as he gets it covered. He'll be happy where he is now. Should have been, shouldn't have been afforded this opportunity if Nick had uh, played that DF earlier. I think yeah. Neil was in a lot of trouble. Put the owners back on him, make him force it. Before he'd ever been in a position to tell Nick he's played the wrong shot, but I think he has. I'll remind him after this as well. <laughs> I don't think that's where he wanted to be, though. He's got the yellow to the right, but he's gone all the way around the black. He's not... Oh, yeah, he tried. No, that's no good. No. It should be match over. Yeah. He didn't get on that properly. Now the only the only problem is, uh, if you look at these three balls at the bottom corner here, there's no kind of natural no. plants. He needs to kind of force one onto the other, and he doesn't want to push the red across onto the yellow. So, and if he plays the one he's looking at, he can't play it hard. If he plays it hard, he's going to lose one of those reds. Yeah, he needs to be on something after this, definitely. Even if it's just enough to get over to the other side. Because all, all the other balls are there now. He used to play this at a controlled pace. Ah, oh, he could get through. Didn't think he could quite get through, but that's okay. He is certainly in a trying see now. He can I expect him to, to take these. Or, or maybe he might even look to cover the other bag. No, I think he's going to go again. I don't think he's going to get another, another chance. He won't get a better chance than no. this. Just cut this one along the rail. Trace the side. Yeah. Decelerate. No. I was I I wasn't wasn't happy with no. that one. I, I would have gone the other way. Yeah, yeah, and then I just rolled that for one in and then played it back in the middle. Exactly. Yeah, that's what When I, he came to the table I was thinking exactly that. If he goes yeah. the other way, he can play that. Yeah. Stun back across table. Yeah. And then just, just drop that in. I mean the trouble was he had to You don't had, you don't want to be playing that at pace. No. A horrible shot to play with pace. But it's one of those if you if you decelerate, you're gonna miss it. Yeah. And there's a glorious chance now. Oh, well. I think okay? he's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. They go off the side. He's yeah. cushion, he'll be alright. Look at the back in the middle. Of Just shouldn't have had this chance. No. And this is going to put the pressure right back on Nick's break. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We've just given it. A worried look for a second. But, um, I think you can just soft screw this, dink it in, and leave the. Uh, well, well, if you could just dink it in and leave the white for the middle, but I'm not sure he can. Maybe he can't hold it. He's not. Slightly he's more angle. Great. No. He's coming up. He's unless he's going to try and screw it back and play in the other same bag again. Oh, he's, he's That's really well, well controlled. Yeah. Fantastic. He's missed oh, no. it. He's missed it. Wow. Absolutely wow. unbelievable. That's a bit of pressure maybe, but I would not expect him to miss something like that. That's a shock in this. 
Now it's Nicholas Bryan Bowles' turn to finish his game off. I think over the course of the match, Nick has been the steadier of the two. Well played. It's paid a lot. Yeah. Neil will be very annoyed with himself because, yeah. uh, well, just a few too many unforced errors from him. But it's yeah. Nick Bell that goes through to the quarter f uh, to the semi final. Um, we'll have a before we wrap things up. We'll have a very quick look at the scores from the other games. You can do the same on QScore.com. Uh, so um, we know that Shane Thompson's through. Daniel Bishop has beaten Scott Pope. And uh, Macaulay Gunn is 8-7 up against Steve Bell. We're going to try and catch Nick Bell for a quick interview. So we'll be across in the interview room in uh, just a few minutes. But for now, thanks very much, Luke. Thanks for joining pleasure. us. Thank Enjoy you. your roast dinner. I will. I've got, I, I got to go now. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. All the best. Is that right for you? Yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, I'm with Nick Bell. Uh, Nick, mistakes from both of you, but overall you've got to be happy with that performance. I was, well, to start with I was, but then near the end of the match, struggled a little bit. Yeah. Just getting over that line. Breaks killed him to start with. They did, he had yeah. a lot yeah. of drive breaks. Yeah. I mean, you seem to be the the only player today that's really mastered that break. I mean, you, you had it early on. Yeah, everyone's complaining about the table. Yeah. But broke well to start with. Using a Jason Owen break cue? Yeah, Jason Owen break cue. Yeah, you've got to be happy with that. It performed well for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty uh, much overall. But I mean, he was never really out of it, was he? He kept coming back yeah. at you. He's always got that good clearance in him, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So he always puts you under pressure. Yeah. So. Onwards now to the semi final. How are you feeling about that? Fairly confident. Just keep, yeah. play, keep, keep playing like that. Plugging away, really. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I've got to be honest. No idea. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who's up. Uh, who's up next? I think there's one game still still going on. So, uh, okay. still probably something to be decided. But yeah, good luck. Good luck with the uh, semi final and the rest of the event. Cheers. So we'll be back with the action soon. Not sure who's on the on the main table, but uh, we'll speak to you shortly.
Yeah.